Hello, Junkaholics. So this is the day you've been waiting for. Well, maybe not. I know this is the day I've been waiting for. You might not care. Shouldn't assume. But anyways, this is the day that I'm packing and shipping to board sort. Well, I'm going to get it packed. I'm going to buy the shipping label. I don't know if I'll make it to the post office. But you know what I'm saying. Um... So just a little bit of a warning. I have not prepared for this except to figure out the dimensional weight of a box, which I'm going to go over in a few minutes. So I'm not, maybe I should just go over it now. So dimensional weight is a figure that the carriers use to figure out how big of a box they'll allow for X amount of pounds. So in our case, were allowed 40 pounds but there is a dimensional weight so there you might have a box that only weighs seven pounds but because of the size of the box they're going to classify it as 40 pounds because of the size of the box because with both canada post and dhl and i think most car carriers they go by dimensional weight first then they go by actual weight. So, you know, it's it's a thing for them to make money off of. Truly. So, we're going to prepare the box now, and uh, we'll catch you all soon. Okay, so this box here is a good, nice suggest if you can, Use a double corrugated box, which means it's got two layers of cardboard. Um, so these circuit boards, they are sharp, and they'll pay, pierce through cardboard pretty easy. But this is a good HP box. It's meant for shipping this stuff, so I suggest if you come across these boxes, hang on to them. So this box is 22 inches that way 15 inches that way and way too tall so i figured out dimensional weight will come up to this line 19 and a half inches okay so what we're going to do is we're going to cut that down four inches we're just going to make some flaps And just cut the corner down. Of course, this flops in the way. So just cut that down. Uh, right about there. And then I'm going to do that on all four corners, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've cut all four corners. I also went all the way across just the first layer of cardboard with my knife all the way around. This way it gives us a natural um, folding line. So, now I'm going to fold these. See, makes a nice crisp clean line for a flap. Now the reason I'm doing this is to make sure I don't go over our dimensional weight so I know when I reach the top okay, this guy is going to give me a hard time so I'm just going to rescribe that line so just like that Now I know it's not perfect, but now we know once we reach the top, don't be putting more in, right? It's the whole idea behind this. So I'm going to put this box to the one side. And I'm going to go get my scale. So another thing I got here is a piece of paper and a pen. For some of my younger viewers, 
If you don't know what that is, this is how we use the text message. But it's good for making lists. So here we've got um, some multi multi socket server boards, and they're at seven pounds two point eight ounces. Wow. So we'll just mark that on the paper. Uh, multi um, server. 7.28 the next is we got some pin boards we got two pin boards and they weigh four pounds 14 ounces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these multi socket boards to the one side and then the uh, pin boards on the bottom. And now I'm gonna cut pieces of cardboard to separate those two. And I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, I've separated the pin boards with the rest. And then over there, I put multi socket, I put the weights and it's not perfect. I know I should be wrapping them in individual boxes, but, um, as long as we can keep them separated, they'll be fine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just um, weigh all this stuff up and uh, just the same way as I did before. I'll show you the completed box once I'm done. So here's the box, my server um motherboards are on the side this box here is filled with gold finger cards and the rest is high telecom so then i just put this over top like that what i'm going to do is just cut down these sides even a little more fill that void in with some crushed paper and tape it up the reason why I'm going to cut that box down even more is to pay less shipping. Because what happened here is I reached uh, 40 pounds. I took three pounds out because you have to take an account of the packing material. You have to stay under 40 pounds. So I'm shipping 37 pounds, three pounds of shipping material and that'll bring me right on 40 pounds. So I'll show you what the box looks like after it's taped up. So now we're gonna do the board sort stuff. I've already registered. Registering is really easy. The only tricky part is the, uh, the I am a human thing, but if I figured it out, you'll be able to figure it out. We're going to go to the cell e scrap button. There's the cell e scrap. I'm just going to get my list. Okay, so what I'm looking for is um, first of all, I'm looking for a multi server board uh, where I can. So here we go. I have what uh, seven, two point eight, and what happens is at the bottom. It just automatically tells you um, what it is, how much a pound, and uh, 
how many pounds you got in the amount. So then I'm going to look for pin board. Okay, pin board. Oh, right there. So there's pin boards. And I've got four pounds, 14 ounces. Now I'm going to do high grade telecom. 20 pounds, 14 ounces, and then Goldfinger cards. Oh, here we go. Goldfinger card, clean, no fan, no sink, and no bracket. So of that, we've got four pounds, two ounces. So if we go down to the bottom, now we will see that we have 37.5 pounds at 224.78. So now I'm going to hit sell this material. I'm going to say, please send me via PayPal. They already have my PayPal. And then I'm going to hit Submit Sale. So here, I will be printing this invoice. They give you all the information here. And then I will go, I'll go print that off. And then we'll come back and I'll tell you how to ship this. Okay, so now we're over at NetParcel. I just went to netparcel.com. I went through the PayPal way because then I could just log in with my PayPal. But anyways, it's all the same thing. You just log in. You create an account if you need to create an account. I'm not going to go over that. That's that's basic internet one, two, three. And so I'm already set up on here. So there's nice junk, my address, my city, my phone number, my email address. Now I'm going to, um, I have board sort saved in the system. So I just click that. So board sort, their address, attention to Chris, their phone number, their Blah, blah, blah. So then we're going to put in the size. So 17 by 23. Oops. 23 uh, by 12. 40 pounds insurance value I put 270 no special handling then you get quote so as you can see then it generates all the different carriers so if I could have shipped by Pure later UPS, I could have paid $61 or $63. But, according to Chris, the only way we can get this across is through Canada Post or DHL Worldwide. So you scroll down to Canada Post. Nine days, it'll be faster than that. $119.02. So you select because you don't want to ship at 147.83. So, just so you know, I did check 
um, different methods. I went on to the USPS site, and if I drive down to Sweetgrass, Montana, and went into a USPS post office, it would have been $124 United States dollars. So 119 is a bargain, because that's 119 Canadian, instead of 124 uh, American dollars, plus the $40 worth of gas for me to drive down there. So this is actually a bargain. So it creates this. Um, I do an one lot of printed circuit boards. Okay, let's try spell not right. Then it's going to ask for an HS code. So I go over to Canada Post. They have a find an HS code. So you're going to select United States. Then I'm going to do computer parts. Find. And then it's got printed circuit board. So just click, select that. Continue. Here's our HS code. Copy. And then I go back to that parcel. I put that in. I'm going to select China because everything comes from China. Because I'm not going to look up every board. I'm sorry. And they're never going to look. I'm going to put 270. And then just hit confirm. And then all you have to do is hit the ship it. I've already done this because I did this whole video for you. And believe it or not, I forgot to hit record this whole part. So anyways, so $119.02. Canadian. Now I just want to show you something. So I'm going to do, so how much am I getting for this? Uh, so 224.78 USD to Canadian is three hundred and four dollars nineteen cents Canadian so if you do the math we're still getting um, some fairly good money if you take off the hundred nineteen it's like a hundred and eighty some bucks right I'm not doing the math because it's too early in the morning and I had to redo this part so we are not going to get that in um, Canada at any scrapyard I don't care so to me it's very worthwhile doing and uh, but in saying so I would not ship anything under um, three dollars and fifty cents a pound. Um, once you start getting under three dollars and fifty cents a pound, it's just not worth it unless you're going to use it as filler and um, for some of your higher end stuff. But I wouldn't suggest it. I would stay at three fifty. Don't send anything else. So $3.50 and up to me is fair game. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a bleep bloop in the comments below. And that was some nice junk. See you next week.